says before getting Phoenix, you must understand it. Oh, hi, how are you doing today? I've just been reading how to take care of my Phoenix with my pet Phoenix and my dragon and this polka dot unicorn. Yeah. So as I was reading these, to my magical friends, I got to thinking that maybe my story time friends might like some magical reads as well. So I got some magical books out for you because did you know what our summer reading theme is? Our summer reading theme is Magic Unbound. It's all about having a magical journey and traveling and using your imagination to go explore and have fun. So we're going to talk a little bit about some magical creatures and we're going to talk about some magic trick type stories. We have a lot of fun ideas. All right, I'm going to put them down and then we can get started. Okay. Okay. Now, I don't know if you've done this already, but if you haven't, I wanted to make sure I tell you, and I'm going to tell you again later, that you need to make sure you fill out your reading record for our quest. So this is your magical adventure that you've been going on by reading all summer and watching story times with me and Miss Karen and Miss Jenny and doing any of the things that are on the DIY page. Um, at worthingtonlibraries.org so you can work your way all the way around and then when you get to the end you get a prize you can bring back your completed quest to the library that you use and all of our libraries while we're open we have stations outside where you can pick up your prize which is a very new book for just you so you can pick out a book that you'll love and maybe it'll take you on your next magical adventure. But I want to make sure I told you about that because guess what? As happens often in magical adventures, there's a bit of a tragedy that our summer reading program's almost over. It is. Our summer reading program technically ends on June or July 20th. And that might even be today, depending on when you watch this. So make sure you stop by the library with your completed forms, okay? And you can get your prize. Okay, now back to our magical reads. Are you ready? I have one that's going to introduce us to a lot of different magical animals. Some of these I had to look up because I never heard of them. Mm -hmm. And then I might still pronounce them wrong, I'm sorry. This is called, If I Had a Griffin, and it's by Vicki Van Sickle and illustrated by Kale Atkinson. And it's from Tundra Books. Last week, I got a hamster, my first and only pet. He mostly eats and sleeps and hides and gets his shavings wet. Do any of you have a pet? Hmm, do you have a pet hamster? We used to have pet rats. They did similar things to the hamster. If only I could have a pet with strange exotic powers, I know that I'd find lots to do to while away the hours. Oh, I think we're about to meet some magical pets. If I had a unicorn, I'd braid her silky mane. I'd make her silver horseshoes that tinkled in the rain. We'd prance through fields of posies and nibble nectarines. I'd shine her horn with candy corn to get a starry sheen. I had no idea that was how you had to shine a horn. Unicorns are pretty, but they're also very shy. On second thought, I'd like to give a hippogriff a try. A hippogriff needs lots to do, like run and jump and fetch. I take him to the dog park to give his wings a stretch. Do you think the other dogs would like to see a hippogriff? He looks pretty scary to me. Though a hippogriff is tons of fun, the dogs might find him scary. And when it comes to playing ball, well, things could get quite hairy. 
Perhaps I'll get a Sasquatch with burly, curly fur. But then I'd spend three hours a day attacking snarls and burrs. That means trying to brush that Sasquatch's hair. If I had a griffin, I'd love each flashing feather, but she needs flying every day regardless of the weather. Do you think it would be fun to have to go fly in rain and thunderstorms? Probably not. If I had a kraken, we'd swim and deep sea dive, but I would need a scuba suit in order to survive. A kraken lives underwater. If I had a dragon with a temperamental snout, I need a fire extinguisher to put her sneezes out. That's because dragons are supposedly they blow fire. Mm -hmm. <gasps> Kieran needs a field of grass at least an ocean wide. Jackalope needs sturdy reins for bumpy jumpy rides. Phoenix needs a chimney nest that's smoke and fireproof. Manticore needs special floss for each and every tooth. Harpies are too screechy. Chupacabras like to bite. Fairies play too many tricks and Kelpies hate the light. Basilisk is slippery. Chimera likes to scratch. Mermaids brush their hair all day and sprites are hard to catch. Perhaps a hamster's not so bad. In fact, he's rather sweet. I love his furry belly and his teeny tiny feet. He may not be a griffin or a creature from the sea, but I am his and he is mine. And that's enough for me. Oh, look at that. Our hamster's pretending to be other animals now. All right, you did such a great job with that story. That introduced us to a lot of mythical creatures. That means magical creatures. Now, Mythical or magical also means it's just a fun pretend idea. Mm -hmm. Hamsters are real. You'll see hamsters around. But the other animals in the story, you're probably not going to see those. Okay, let's go ahead and do a song about a pet you might have at your house. Does anybody have fish at your house? Can you think of what song we might be doing? Let's sing a little bit of Lori Berkner's song, The Goldfish Song. Are you ready? All right, we're gonna lay down and pretend to go to sleep. I'm just gonna lay down right here, but you can lay all the way down, ready? Lots of little fish were sleeping on a rock in the bottom of the ocean. They lifted up their heads and they shook out their tails. And they said, let's go swimming, let's go swimming, let's go swimming. Yeah, let's go swimming, let's go swimming, let's go swimming in the bottom of the ocean. Oh, and then the little fish got so very, very tired that they came back to the rock and they put down their heads and they put down their tails and they took a little nap. And when they woke up, oh, they decided to brush their teeth. Can you get up? So they got out their toothbrush and their toothpaste and they squeeze a little on and try not to waste and they put it in the mouth and brush north and south Mom, and then they seen, said have you seen Lily? yes wait a minute we're fish we don't brush our teeth let's go swimming let's go swimming yeah, let's go swimming, let's go swimming, let's go swimming in the bottom of the ocean. Good job. If you really like that song, which I do, you can find it on Lori Berkner's YouTube page, and that way you can hear the whole thing. I'm going to go mom for a second. I'll be right back with some more magical. Thank you for waiting, friends. We had a little bit of an injury, but it wasn't from a hip, hippogriff or any of those chupacabra or anything like that. Um, so let's go ahead and do our next story. The next story actually has no words in it. It's another one of those wordless picture books. And one of the reasons I really wanted to read this story is because it's about the magic of your imagination and of the things that you can create and the adventures you can go on 
all by yourself. This one is called Journey. If you've read Harold and the Purple Crayon, it reminds me a little bit of that one too. Yeah, and it is by Aaron Becker. And from Candlewick Press. And I'm actually gonna scoot up a little bit so you can see all of these pictures. All right, how's that? Here we go. Woo, I think my laptop's gonna fall off. Okay, so what is this? There's one little scooter and one little girl and everything else is kind of gray, isn't it? Oh, it looks like she's trying to get somebody's attention, but it seems like everybody else is busy. Have you ever felt that way where you had fun ideas, but everybody else was too busy to play? It happens. Happens at my house too sometimes, but you know, I don't know if you remember when we talked about boredom a couple weeks ago, when we're bored, that's when we get some of our best ideas. All right, so she's in her room. She looks like she might feel bored. And then what does she see? A red marker. And she draws, okay, don't draw on your walls, friends. Your grownups do not want you to draw on your walls, okay? Okay. She draws on her wall and draws a doorway. Where do you think she's going? What? Is that what you pictured? I see trees and a stream and beautiful lights everywhere. Oh, she's at the river. What does she need? Guess what? She draws herself a boat. Oh, what? Can you even see her little boat? Oh, there it is. And she's going to this big city. Oh no, she's about to fall off the edge. Oh, good thing she can draw really quickly. What do you think she's drawing? That's a circle as she's flying through the air. Very good guess, a hot air balloon. Look at that. Now she's floating away. And she sees oh, somebody trying to catch this. I think that might be a phoenix. Hmm. Oh, where is she going now? Oh, it looks like they caught the phoenix. Hmm, what do you think is going to happen next? Let's see. Oh, she's following the captured phoenix. Can you see it's up there? She's down here. She's trying to get it. Now, sometimes wordless picture books are hard for me to do this way because you can't see the pictures as well. This is a great one for you to check out from the library and get to look at it really close because the pictures are beautiful. Oh no, what'd she do with the phoenix? She stole it, oh dear. And now she's, oh, she let it free. And that, mm -mm, I don't think that guy is happy. Oh no. Where did they put her? They put her in the cage like the phoenix had been. <gasps> oh, guess what? What did that phoenix do? It brought back the marker. So she could draw. What do you think she's drawing? I see. One line, two lines, three, four. <gasps> Oh, it looks like she might be drawing a rectangle. What could it be? That is so smart. What did she draw? She drew a magic carpet and it could fly her on out of there. 
oh, the phoenix found a little door for her. They both went through. <gasps> what? Where did that phoenix take her? To a boy with a purple marker. Look at that. They're going to draw together. Ah! How fun is that? They made a bicycle. Each of them made a wheel. You did a wonderful job with that story. I hope you really liked it. I know it is a little bit tricky, like I said, with the wordless picture books, but they have such value for you when you're starting to tell stories. Okay, I was thinking about the magical adventure that she went on, and I was thinking that maybe we could go on our own magical adventure, and we could do a bear hunt. Are you ready? We're going to start by... Good job. I'm going to pretend to walk with that noise. Or you can stand up and walk. We're going on a bear hunt. Now you say it. We're going to catch a big one. With big green eyes. And a fuzzy little tail. And then, guess what? We can go through all sorts of different places. So we can... <gasps> Look over there. There's a big mountain. We can't go over it. We can't go under it. We have to go through it. Are you ready? Turn on your flashlight. We're going to go through the mountain. And then when we get to the other side, we're going to go... Going on a bear hunt. We're going to catch a big one. With big green eyes. And a fuzzy little tail. Now I like it because you can go through all kinds of places. So you can go through the grass and you can make swishes, swishes. You can go through a river where you have to swim, 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 swim. And you can go on all sorts of adventures until you find a cave with a bear in it. And then you have to run back through all of those things. You can make it your own and do it as long as you are into it. Super fun to do. All right, sit back down on your magic carpets and we're going to do another story. This one is more about magic tricks or being a magician. It's called Magic Box, and it's by Katie Clemenson. It's from Hyperion Books. On her birthday, Eva was given a very special present. She opened it, jumped in, and became a master magician. Ta-da! For her first trick, she wished for what she wanted most in the whole world, a pet called Monty. Monty turned out to be rather large. What kind of animal is he? A polar. For her next trick, Eva pulled a rabbit out of a hat. Did she pull out one rabbit? No. She pulled out a lot of rabbits, didn't she? Then, with a flick of her wand, she made things float in the air. Ooh, I don't know if I would like that. For her biggest trick of all, Eva threw a huge party. There was lots of delicious food. The very best musicians. and plenty of dancing. Oh, look at that. They are all dancing and playing. When everyone had danced their socks off, Eva shut her eyes, clicked her fingers. I know, I told you I can't snap my fingers. 
Not right now. And everything vanished. Well, not quite everything. What was left from her big box? Oh, the polar bear stayed. Do you remember what his name was? Was it back at the beginning? I think it was Monty. Let's see. We got a pet called Monty. All right. I have a little bit of a rhyme that I used to use when I taught preschool. And I'm going to teach it to you now in case your teachers use it. Are you ready? Okay. It's called Magic Finger. And we're going to put a magic finger up in the air. And we're going to say, magic finger in the air. Magic finger in my hair. Magic finger on my hips. Do you know where your hips are? That's where the top part of your body bends from the bottom part of your body. <gasps> magic finger on my lips. All right, let's try it again. See if you can hear the rhyming words. Ready? Magic finger in the air. Magic finger in my hair. Magic finger on my hips. Magic finger on my lips. What was the rhyme for air? It was hair. And what about hips? What was that rhyme? Lips. Remember, rhymes are words that sound the same at the end of the word, not the beginning. They sound the same at the end. It's tricky, isn't it? You're doing great. I have, let's see, I think one more little story I wanted to read. Mommy, is it my book? Hold on. <laughs> isn't that cute? It's called My Magical Dragon. And I think this is one of my favorite books with Mommy, moving parts. I not not right now hold on let me finish that i have ever seen look at how his wings change isn't that fun all right a dragon who was kind and strong watched over a palace all day long are you ready i'm gonna move it Whoop. <gasps> look all the happy people and the happy little dragon all right one day the prince and princess cried won't you take us for a ride Oh, do you think he will? Look at that. Ooh, going back and forth. At Grandma's castle, they stopped for tea, which Dragon helped make magically. I think this is one of the most impressive pages. If you can see, he breathes fire, and then the teapot actually gets some steam coming out of it. Oh, it might take me a minute. Let's see. See, there it comes. All right. And when they got home safe and sound, he took a long snooze underground. Ready? There he is. He does baby dragons. I know, he's got baby dragons and a dragon bathroom. All right. You did a great job with that story. I hope that you liked it. I thought it was really cute. There's also apparently uh, my, uh, my Magical Unicorn and My Magical Mermaid by the same people. I thought that was a pretty fun one. All right. I had some ideas of fun things that you could do at home. First of all, if you are looking for some sort of magical adventure, I don't know if you could tell, but I found a few books that you could maybe read. I know, I found a lot of books. I actually had a note about how many books I requested this time. But there were so many fun books about magic. Okay, so I hope you can find some good magical reads at the library. Do you know that you can request books and then come to the library and pick them up? We're doing curbside pickups. So if you can ask your grown-up to request certain books for you, we will send them to your library that you use and then you can set up a time to pick them up. We're at Northwest, you can use the drive up window. Yeah, it's been really fun to get to see so many of my friends coming to pick up story time books. Um, but I wanted to make sure I told you about that because you might not know that we're doing curbside pickup now. And so you can get some new magical reads at your house. Um, I was thinking I wanted to tell you about a couple others too. I love this series. The um, 
this taking care of your magical creatures series is so fun. There's taking care of like your centaur, the dragon, griffin. Um, it covers a lot of my kids' favorite animals because my kids love dragons and unicorns. So we've really enjoyed those. They're for a little bit older. So maybe if you are in elementary school, you might really like that. Or if you have a big brother and sister that's watching. Uh, another series for the slightly older kids would be the Princess in Black series. is super fun. Um, any of these books would be lots of fun to read. I just couldn't do a story time with 20 books in it. So I had to limit myself to just four. <laughs> All right. I had a few other ideas of fun things that you could do besides checking out some fun magical reads for yourself. You could make a magical creature out of things you have around your house. If you can't think of a magical creature that you already find fun, like if you're not into unicorns or dragons, make one up. I would love to see what you come up with. And you don't have to have any special equipment around your house. You can just work with whatever you have. Now, my daughter has been really making a lot of cool things with her 3D pen. So I wanted to make sure I showed you this. Now, she's she's my big one, okay? But look what she made. Can you tell what it is? She made a dragon. She has a favorite dragon series. So she's made a lot of different kinds of dragons from that series. And then she made this for one of my younger daughters. Can you guess what that daughter's favorite animal might be? It's a unicorn. Yeah. So you can make them out of fun things like that. I don't know if you've ever seen making twist tie artwork, but you could use like the twisties from the tops of trash bags. Um, it makes some pretty fun artwork. You can make it with pipe cleaners. There are lots of fun options. Or you could even just use trash around your house if that's okay with your grown up. Some grown ups are not big fans of trash art, but you can make something out of that. And it would be so fun to see what you made. I would love to see pictures. Um, I was also thinking you could draw a magical journey that you would love to go on, like in the book Journey how she drew her whole adventure, you could do that too. I would love to see what your magical journey would be. Um, you can finish your summer reading program and get a new book. That's a great thing to work on. And I also thought it might be fun to try to learn a magic trick. Like there are magic card tricks, magic tricks where you make balls appear or light shine through ears, things like that, that you could probably learn to do. So that would be lots of fun to try. All right, my friends, I think that's all I have for you today. I really hope that this magical journey theme was fun for you. I had a lot of fun planning it and in a time where maybe we can't go travel like we would like to, and maybe we can't go as many places as we want to, isn't it nice that we still have our amazing imaginations to take us places and to help us create and think of new things to do? I know, I love it too. All right, my friends, I will see you soon. Please remember that you are loved, you are special, and you, my friend, are magical. Bye.